everybody, welcome back. Let's talk about how to build authority online so you can get more followers, subscribers, and ultimately customers. If you want to build a business or a personal brand, you need to be able to build authority in your market category online. It doesn't matter what kind of business you're in. You could be in the creative fields or real estate or finance or industrial products or retail or consulting services. It doesn't really matter. There are four main pillars of activity that you need to engage in to do it. And those pillars are credibility, visibility, value, and authority. So let's talk about authority a little bit. The definition of authority is the power to influence or command thought, opinion, or behavior. And you'll notice that it has the word author in it. So our goal really is to build authority online through authorship, through thought leadership, by having an influencing opinion. Ultimately, you want to be able to create the behavior in others that you want i.e. subscribe to you, follow you, share your content, contact you, or ultimately to buy from you. So let's talk about pillar number one, building credibility. The definition of credibility is the quality of inspiring belief. You need people to believe in you. They need to believe that you have the answer, that you can help them solve their problem. The first thing you need to do is know your what and your why. What value do you have to offer? What transformation are you trying to create in people? You need to think about it in terms of benefits, functional benefits and emotional benefits. Now, let's say you have a course on building a LinkedIn profile. The functional benefit of a LinkedIn profile course would be getting a great LinkedIn profile. But the emotional benefit of that would be a higher level of confidence. So as you think about your value, think about functional benefits and emotional benefits because those emotional benefits are what we're really going to play on those needs, those frustrations in order to get people to really identify with us as we share the solution to their problem. Now also, why are you doing it? What's your mission for others? And also, what's your why? What's your motivation for you? Do you want to get more clients? Do you want to get sales of your products and services? Do you want to sell more courses or sell more books? Do you want more speaking opportunities or podcast interviews or conferences? What is it that's in it for you? What is your why going to be? Because that's going to drive a lot of what you do. The next aspect of building credibility is knowing your who. Who is the audience that you want to attract? What's their age? What's their gender? What profession are they in? What's their income level? Their geographic location? Their lifestyle? You really want to understand them as people because you need to understand the problem or the frustration it is that they have. What are the emotional triggers needed for them to actually take action? Is that a fear trigger? Is it ambition or wanting more money, more safety? You want to create a customer avatar or a profile or a persona that you can really personify your who, your customer targets. You can really understand their motivations. And also you want to think about where it is that they hang out, what platform they spend most of their time on. And this is really important because that's where you'll be showing up with your content. Now the next aspect of building credibility is what's your story. What are your credentials? What's the proof you have that you have the expertise to help people? Your education, your past clients, your case studies. Also, what were your struggles? What was your unlock and your own personal transformation in your growth? Your story really helps people get to know you as a person. Your story helps build your credibility. Then you have to choose a place to tell your story visibly. This could be on your website, of course, but it, you're also working into conversation, into comments, into interviews, social media, groups you're in, and also in real life and networking events. Now, a key part of building your credibility is finding your voice. What is your professional voice going to be? You need to have a point of view. You need to be able to express your opinion because they say if you don't stand for something, you stand for nothing. And there's a lot of competition out there. So having an opinion is important to standing out from your competition. You want to share your opinion by commenting on news and trends and industry topics, best practices, methods and processes. Also, think about what is your tone of voice? What's your real personality? Is it serious? Is it inspiring like Tony Robbins? Is it funny like Jon Stewart? Is it kind like Dupac Chopra? Is it brash and kind of 
out there like Gary V, you need to create a personal brand tone of voice in order to build the perception of your personality, your personal brand personality. Another aspect of the credibility pillar which is important is being human. Share some personal things, some stuff about your family or pets or trips or maybe your kids. Share a little bit of your day to day. People love seeing behind the scenes, how things are done. Be honest and authentic and don't try to be the picture of perfection because people can't identify with that. You want to be vulnerable. People love to see others struggle and fall down and get back up. But I have to say, this is actually the hardest thing to do in personal branding and building authority online is being vulnerable because you want to build authority and show strength, but by the same token, you really want to be human and show humility because people want to do business with people, not brands. So you really have to show up as a human being. Now, pillar number two is visibility. To build authority, you have to be seen and easily found and people have to be able to recognize that it's you. Part of this is designing your brand. The quality of the visual design of your brand is really important and makes you look more professional. Things like logos and colors and fonts and design layout. You're going to be using these things in social profile art like banners and avatars. You're going to be using in content artwork like thumbnails and social media post graphics. You're going to be using it on your website and your print collateral and your business cards, etc., etc. The list just goes on in terms of the visual assets that you need to develop in order to support building your authority online. Now there's a danger in not investing in really high quality brand design in the beginning. What's that danger? It's because if you go out and you're putting a lot of visual assets out into the world and there's inconsistency there or you're evolving and changing as you go along, it's going to cost a lot more money later on to go back and fix it all and make it look great and make it look consistent than it is to invest in quality brand design at the beginning. So I encourage you to do that. And if you need help building a visual brand, I encourage you to reach out to me at philipvandusen.com. My agency does work like that and we can help you get there. Another key aspect of the visibility pillar is getting a platform. I encourage you to get one single social media platform and go deep into it for at least six months before you try to spread out and go to more platforms. You really want to show up really great in one place for at least six months before you start expanding. And you need to remember that social media platforms like YouTube and Twitter and Instagram are not your platform. They're someone else's platform. You might have heard the saying, don't build your brand on borrowed land because platforms evolve. They change. Just look what Instagram has been doing with it moving heavily into reels. Platforms really do evolve a lot. And so you can't put all your eggs in a social platform basket. Platforms also make it hard to contact your followers directly. So yes, you need to start on social media and you need to start on a social platform, but what you need to do is ultimately build your own real estate, build your own space. And that is, of course, your website. And ultimately, the goal is to drive people off of your social platforms and onto your website so you can capture them as followers and capture all their contact information so you can start communicating with them directly. Pillar number three is delivering value. Building authority requires building belief that you can deliver solutions that you can deliver value. Now, this is value that's delivered through free means like content as well as compensated value, that is selling your products and services. So let's talk a little bit about content. The purpose and themes of the content that you develop must help solve people's solutions. So what kind of content could you develop? You could develop writing, so blogs, articles, newsletters, guest posting on other people's websites. You could develop video, live streams, short and long form video, shorts, reels, TikTok, etc. You could focus purely on audio, so doing audio downloads or podcasting. You could even just focus purely on developing imagery, Instagram pictures or infographics or Pinterest boards. Another form of content development is speaking. So you can speak at conferences or summits. You could publish a book or publish an ebook on Amazon. It's really easy these days. You can also just curate content that is sharing other people's content and commenting on it, tagging others and starting the engagement that way. So let's talk about that creativity muscle a little bit, a key part of building visibility. 
Creating content takes practice. It's like developing a muscle. An easy way to start is by sharing other people's content, curated content. Or you can start by simply commenting on other people's posts. Richard Moore, who's a LinkedIn expert, just recently told me comments are content too. And then later you can start developing more elaborate original content. The goal is to use content ultimately as a lure. You want to drive people off the social site and onto your website. That's usually done using lead magnets and an email sign-up. So in order to receive a downloadable piece of content, people have to share their name and their email address with you. You can share things like checklists and infographics and listicles and PDFs, white papers. There's any number of things that you can use as downloadable lead magnets in order to attract people and start to build your email list. Now, another key aspect of the value pillar is strategizing a plan. You need to build a marketing plan and a calendar. This is critical. You need to map out things like where, so what platforms you're going to post on, what, so what types of content you're going to create, when, when are you going to be publishing and how often. And also don't forget to check your analytics because your analytics are really going to tell you what is working and what's not working and how you can adjust and change your tactics or chase success and sunset other activities that aren't working for you. So really look at your analytics, your subscribers, your downloads, your web traffic, your contact forms, even your sales. Check that ROI because it's going to inform what you do with your marketing plan. Now, a kind of scary part of the value pillar is hitting publish. And this is where 95% of people who are trying to build authority online fail. They never hit publish. Posting those first couple posts is really scary because you think that everyone is looking at you. I want to tell you an analogy that I used recently, which is the concert analogy. Say you are a performer. And usually the way it works in a concert is that the audience goes in, they pay, they go in, and they wait for the performer to take, take the stage. The performer comes in, they perform, everyone claps, that's the end. Content marketing and building authority online is totally different. What you have to do is get up on stage and perform your heart out to an empty room for a long period of time before people start to recognize your talent. And then they'll slowly start to filter in. And over time, they may call their friends and the crowd gets a little larger and then they end up paying you. So starting off is hard. Getting across that terror barrier of those first few posts is where 95% of people fall down. And when you are hitting publish, there's a few things I want you to remember. Number one, brand it. Make sure to have your logo and your photo and your company name and your contact information and your website on all of your social posts. Also, make sure that on all your posts you have some sort of call to action. What do you want them to actually do? Do you want them to call? Do you want them to join your Facebook group? Do you want them to join your email list or get some sort of download? And then finally, make sure that you're cross-promoting. Posting in the first place that you post something is only the beginning. You want to cross-post that across a range of different platforms and repurpose that content. Another important aspect of the value pillar is being consistent. You want to be really consistent with your visual branding. You want to be consistent with your posting schedule, the platforms you're posting to, the value and the quality of the content you're putting out. You want to be really consistent with the level of engagement that you have and you build with your audience. You want to be sure over time to build anticipation and expectation of your content with your audience and then fulfill that need with the value. And the final key component of the value pillar is recycling. This is an important one linked to what I just talked about, meaning that one piece of content can become 10. It's called content repurposing. You can take a video and then you can transcribe that video and turn it into an article or take the audio and turn it into a podcast. You can take a podcast and transcribe it and turn it into a blog post or an article or actually video record that podcast and put it up as a video. You could take a blog article and turn it into a listicle or an infographic or a quote graphic. There are tons of ways to repurpose content. So you can't think of your content as a single piece. You have to think of it as a single pillar piece of content that then gets repurposed. One key thing to remember about repurposing content is that people like to consume content in different ways. Some people like to listen to their content like a podcast. Some people like to watch it on YouTube. Some people like to read it. Some people like to view their 
their content on mobile while they're walking their dog. Other people may like to read it when they're having their lunch. That's one of the really important things about content repurposing, is you're taking content that's in one particular media and you're spreading it out across other media so you can really get as much bang for your buck as you can. And finally, the authority pillar. You have to think about this as authorship leading to action. The number of subscribers or followers that you have are purely vanity metrics. It's really much more valuable to have 100 die-hard followers than 10,000 who are just lukewarm lurkers. Your content themes really have to serve to teach and to help people solve their problems. Be sure to focus on driving action on the part of your audience. You always want to have a clear call to action. So telling them to like or comment or share or visit your website or download something or join your email list. You want to make sure that your call to action points to the ultimate solution, which is working with you or buying from you. And another key aspect of the authority pillar is creating transformations. Now, when you deliver results for your clients or customers, you want to make sure that you're recording their successes. You're gathering feedback, you're gathering testimonials, quotes, and even video testimonials. And then over time, you want to build case studies and display them prominently on your website, on social media, in your content. You want to tell your customers and your clients stories. These transformations are what the proof of your authority is, and it's kind of like a virtual cycle. You deliver free content, you get contacted by customers, you service them and give them great value, you transform their lives and their businesses, and then you capture their testimonials and the proof of that transformation, which is the proof of your authority. And the final and maybe even the most important aspect of building authority is engagement. Building authority is a two-way street. You want to start a real conversation. I started off this, this video talking about showing your humanity. Well, this is where you do it. You answer your comments. You show your personality. You show that you really care. One of the benefits of this is that you're really going to learn what your audience likes and what they don't like and what is working for their businesses and what's not. And another added benefit is that you can then adjust your content and your approach to serve them even better. So let's do a quick review. The four pillars of building authority online. Number one is increasing credibility. That's having a point of view and building belief that you have the solution to your audience's problem. Number two is increasing your visibility so you can be found easily and recognized for who you are. Number three is delivering value publishing valuable content consistently and reliably. And finally, building authority through building a following. Your proof of authority is your following and also creating transformations, which is further proof of your authority. So that's it. I hope you like this video on how to build authority online. If you want to become more visible and more influential and more of an authority in your field, reach out to me at philipvandusen.com and let's build your personal brand. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, bang that notifications bell. Thanks a lot for joining me, and I'll see you in the next one.